getting in close with this Weihander. Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. I hope the sound's okay. It's a bit of a windy day here, so apologies if you do get lots of wind interference. I have literally put a sock around the mic, so that might help. Um, so, what I was thinking about is what do you do when you get in close with a Zweihander? Well, the fact is we don't have an awful lot of sources, um, uh, treatises for Zweihander use, or Spadone, or Montante, or whichever language um, you want to use to describe these giant two-handed swords. Um, and those that we do tend to focus on distance fighting, for obvious reasons, because it's predominantly a, a long-reach distance fighting weapon. Um, and so a lot of the techniques that we see involve um, essentially moving the sword around, keeping it moving around, and in some cases uh, changing direction to fight multiple opponents. But what happens if you're fighting one-on-one -on -one and you do end up getting close in with one of these? Well, if it was a long sword, we know that there's several options for how to use a sword in close range. Use your left hand for grappling. You can uh, half sword, okay, that means grabbing the blade up here. And indeed, you could half sword with one of these, although it's a bit big for half swording. Particularly with this example, it's got a broad blade as well. Broader blades are harder to grab. More narrow or tapering blades are easier to grab. Um, in terms of the pommel, if I want to end someone rightly, this doesn't unscrew, so I can't throw my pommel at them, which would be useless anyway if they're in close. But um, yes, absolutely, if someone um, collapses my bind or charges in on me, smack, absolutely, I could use my pommel or my cross guard, definitely. Um, and you can deliver quite a hell of a lot of force with a pommel strike, because not only has it got the force of both your arms and your body behind it, that being a hard focused object, but it's got the mass of this behind it as well. In this case, it's about eight pounds. It's a bit overweight really for its size, but it's gonna hit with a lot of force. It's much like the butt on uh, the bayonet. And as you guys know, I love the butt. Um, so really when someone does come in close, you do have all of the standard longsword options, pommeling, stuff with the cross guard, um, half swording, to either thrust or lose, use this as a lever, and of course, using the left hand, grappling, wrestling, all of this kind of stuff. But, um, with these swords, we have something else on them that we've talked about in the past, the lugs, or these spikes down here. And I think the predominant reason, the main reason for these being here, is um, to assist the bind. So when someone's blade slides down your blade, it means it stops there rather than coming down onto the guard, um, at least a lot of the time and that assists binding and winding and things like this. But if you do come in close uh, to someone, notice that these lugs are usually pointy, even on the original antique examples. So um, a lot of people on my previous video said, well, you know, if they're for, to assist the bind and assist parrying, why are they usually pointy? Well, it could be, and I hasten to add this, as far as I know, this is in no treaties, if you know, if you're a HEMA researcher and you know of an example where these are used offensively, please do tell me, because I don't know of any examples and I don't think there are any. But it is completely possible just, you know, f function following form, as it were, or form following function. Um, it is possible that these were used offensively in close, so that if someone does um, sort of choke up your blade and bind here, you have got something to offend with here. And even if you switch to half sword, bam, you've got something in the middle there as well. Um, so it is, I think, absolutely possible that these were used offensively sometimes. The other thing to mention is using the sword for a murder strike or a mordhau. Um, and I, I don't know of any evidence of these really massive two-handers being used for that, or being used like that. And I think that they're probably just too big to do that with. But technically, can you do it? Well, I really wouldn't want to hold an object this heavy and this big, assuming it was sharp up here, this is blunt, but assuming it was sharp, I personally wouldn't want to. Um, but could you technically do it if you were wearing leather gloves, for example? Well, let's have a go. Uh, if I hold it by the back end, bam. Yes, indeed, you can use the back end of a two-handed sword to hit with. Whether you hit with the guard or the pommel or even the handle, doesn't really matter. Um, why would you do that? Well, usually you do that against an armored opponent. And to be honest, you've got so much striking force with the two-handed sword. I mean, if I go for the tree trunk uh, behind the um, 
behind the boxing, uh, behind the punching bag. Okay. It hits with so much force um, that uh, it made my watch almost come off. Hits with so much force that, to be honest, sharp or not, um, penetrating armor or not, it's going to have a lot of knockback effect on someone in armor. Um, so with this type of two-hand sword, if someone in armor does come charging at you, just the pure bam, the amount of strike force you could deliver to their head, neck, or shoulder. <laughs> It's going to be a lot of stopping power. Now, you could potentially make that even heavier, and I can tell you that that exerts more force on that punch bag than the, um, than the cutting end of the sword. But um, do you need to? You know, it's kind of overkill. <laughs> um, uh, you can turn this into a poleaxe, essentially, by holding it backwards. But do you really need to? I don't know. I think you can deliver enough force bam, um, with just holding it conventionally because it's such a powerful weapon it's so big and it is eight pounds I just reiterate so it's the weight of a poleaxe but the whereas a poleaxe the point of balance would be at this end uh, in this case the heavier part is actually at the back end so it makes it more nimble um, and you know I've got a point as well so I can even work that into joints in the armor but going back to my original point I think in close you have got all of the long sword options with this uh, spy hander but you've got more leverage and it's bigger okay but I think those lugs might play a part and could be used offensively as well definitely against an unarmored opponent if not necessarily against an armored opponent cheers folks thank you for watching please subscribe follow us on Facebook you can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest thank you